Hello everybody and welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thanks for everybody for tuning in and stopping by. It's yours truly, my name is Nick for those of you brand new. I like to play drums, guitar, bass, and a couple other instruments as well. And we like to do these videos so that way we can learn from the greats, imbibe their technique, and learn what we can from them so that way we can become better musicians ourselves. And we yet again revisit another drummer that we've done on this channel who is one of my favorites, who just doesn't seem to stop blowing my mind. A couple of days ago he dropped a cover of a Linkin Park song which I know he's going to absolutely add a whole bunch of his flair into it so it's going to be absolutely fun to see this obviously our good friend Jorge also known as Ellis Caparo Siberiano there's still a whole lot that we can learn from him so we're going to go ahead take a look at this video see what we can learn from him and see what kind of new techniques that he's adding in to this cover of Linkin Park this is in the end probably the song that helped put Linkin Park on the map as far as their pop sound went so there's definitely a whole lot of stuff that we can see going on that I I, I foresee that he's probably going to end up doing some really crazy stuff in this song but we're going to be so so freaking happy happy to review it obviously you can tell not only because it gets a lot of views to do Jorge's stuff but also because Linkin Park is one of my favorite bands out there they really are all right without further ado ladies and gents let us get into the playthrough this is not how you should play this song as I said we can foresee this happening however let's have some fun shall we we shall I could foresee this happening he's gonna do a lot of crazy stuff at his own flair. So he's doing a single stroke roll between his hi hat pedal and uh, it looks like his splash deck. I like the layering though that he's doing with the toms there. It's adding a little extra color into the riff. It's like what my first drum teacher ever told me. His name is Jeremiah Queen. Jeremiah, if you're ever watching this video, shout out to you, dude. The toms are your color and the snare is your black and white. Adding the toms in adds so much more color to your songs. Oh, yeah. So much good stuff going on there. So much good stuff. So he's using a lot of different flams and stuff in there to add some extra color to the song. Nice accenting. Nice accenting the vocal line with the China symbol there. That helps the part hit a lot harder there. This man is just grooving. And then he's doing that roll too between the bass drum and the floor tom there. I do like how he's playing the groove here because it, it's like he's injecting some slaughter to the veil grooves in there. You can kind of hear it a little bit. Yeah, he's using a lot of crazy layers here. Yeah, I honestly think that he made this song a lot better by adding this groove instead. Like, this should have been the trump groove, honestly. It would have added so much more flavor. Like, I'm convinced he can do no wrong at this point. I am convinced he can do no wrong. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. We'll just let this play out till the last part. Absolutely phenomenal job on Jorge's part there. So what are we seeing here? He opens up the video with saying, this is not how this song should be played. Take those words back, sir. Yes, it is. Honestly, what he's done here is he's changed the feel of the song by changing how the backbeat is played. 
how that main part is played. Because in the original song, the backbeat is really played on the three, not really the two and the four, if you really feel it. Because what does the backbeat go like? It's totally different vibe. He's putting the backbeat on the two and the four, so it's a little bit more common in the, you know, in each bar of the song. And it makes it feel a little bit more driven. It makes it feel a little bit more impactful. You can tell, honestly, in this song, he's using a lot of the cymbal work to help complement the vocals and complement with the accents and all that. And I think that's something that a lot of drummers can really use from. Your cymbals, believe it or not, have a very similar EQ range to the vocals in your mix. That is correct. They lie on a very similar hertz range, especially if the vocals are going to be a lot higher sung or anything like that. So what's something that you can do? to help your mixes get better and also help your song sound a little bit more consistent, add some cymbal effects and cymbal accents to complement the vocal lines. Because honestly, having that backing there, especially if it lies within the same EQ range, it really does help, especially for that part to just hit a little bit harder, for those accents to be a little bit more memorable. It makes your drum parts more memorable. It makes people groove out a lot more. And obviously, like I say, he's keeping loose. He's keeping everything nice and tight. He's doing a lot of crazy stuff to do with rudiment fills, but you'll notice on his main grooves, he's keeping it pretty simple by comparison to a lot of the stuff that he does before, mainly because that main part of the groove that he's using, he changed up the backbeat so much that it's, you don't need to do anything else that's really crazy technically. He already did something that was insane. It honestly also goes to show you how changing up the backbeat of the song changes the entire feel. The original song, yes, has a lot of energy behind it, but the way he played that backbeat I honestly think makes it better. It drives the song a lot more. It makes that part feel a whole lot more important. It makes it feel like you should listen to it a whole lot more because of how important that backbeat is in the song and how he changed it. So keep that into consideration the next time you sit down behind your drum kit and you're trying to write a new riff. Just remember that the backbeat that you're playing is going to be very important to how it complements the song and the other instruments as well. Do you want that backbeat to help that part hit a little bit harder or would you rather have it just be enough. Obviously not. We want that part to hit harder. So just take that into consideration for your next time you sit down to play anything. So yes, Jorge, absolutely phenomenal job. I would love to get this guy on a track one of these days where I, I write a guitar riff or something like that and he just jams. That would be absolutely sick. And with all that being said, guys, we'll cut the video here. So here's just a few things y'all can do to support me. So for one, you can like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the video. You can also check out the playlist that I got down below of all the other videos that I got similar to this. And you can also check out below the links to my Spotify and my band page as well. That would be very helpful. And with all that being said, y'all, that's going to be the end of this one. So thanks for tuning in and sticking around and stopping by. And hopefully I will be able to see you guys in the next video. So cheers, everybody. Have a good one.